Welcome to the 15-minute inspiration for today. I'm Carla Stokes, and I'm honored to serve here at New Birth under the leadership of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Join us every weekday right here at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time for a power-packed spark to your midday. We're so glad that you joined us today. And during these 15 minutes, feel free to comment, like, share, so somebody else can catch this life lesson. Today I brought this pretty package because I really like gifts. I like presents. Recently I celebrated a birthday and I received all sorts of gifts. Big gifts, little gifts, gifts that smelled nice, gifts that looked nice, gifts that I could hold in my hand, uh, gifts that I can look at and cherish forever. And I'm grateful for every single gift. What is it about a gift that makes us feel good? Is it the appreciation, maybe the thoughtfulness that someone took the time to actually look for something that they thought you would like? Well, the Bible tells us a story of two sisters who gave gifts, Mary and Martha. They lived in a town called Bethany, and Jesus came through their town. And when he came through, Martha invited Jesus to come over. The story is told in Luke, the 10th chapter. Let's look at the 38th and 39th verses where it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. She sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Let's talk for a few minutes about the gift of presence. If COVID has taught us anything, I hope that one of the lessons is that we should not miss the moments of our lives. It's so easy to miss the moments, you know, the little moments, the ones that just fleet by, maybe watching the small changes in your children or seeing the butterfly that lands on the little leaf. You know, maybe it's listening to the laughter while you're in the kitchen fixing your fifth or sixth meal or snack of the day. But those little lessons, those little moments, they're so precious. My life's motto is live life with no regrets. I've made that a statement for my life. And of course, there's some things that I wish I could change. I wish I had done things differently. I wish I had said something. I wish I had uh, gone somewhere or, you know, there's some things that I, I wish that I could change, which is why I instituted that motto for my life because I don't want life to pass me by. I don't want to get to the end of my life and have no good, exciting memories of the days that have gone by. I think Mary must have been living by a similar motto. <laughs> she was trying to live life with no regrets. Jesus came to town and was sitting right there in the house. And it didn't matter what was going on. Martha was busy trying to give the gift of service, just trying to make sure she had everything prepared and she could give Jesus a great experience in her home. But Mary, mm -mm. Mary said, I'm going to sit right here at his feet. She didn't want to miss that moment. She wanted to live her life with no regrets. So while Mary sat with Jesus, Martha was busy serving. And while Martha was so busy she didn't have any time to spend with her guest of honor. And she got annoyed with her sister for not helping her with the work. But here's the difference between them. Mary exercised what we call now mindfulness. But Martha was moving into madness. Mary focused on being while Martha focused on doing. Mary was focused on being there, being present, being in the moment. Mary, well... You know, she had to take the wrath of her sister because Martha got mad at her. But I don't think Mary regretted not one moment of spending that time with Jesus. And I don't think Jesus regretted it either. Well, in fact, he told Martha, Mary's doing the better thing. <laughs> and maybe you could take a lesson from Mary. Sit down, relax, be present. One of the best presents that I received for my birthday, I wasn't able to hold in my hand it didn't come in a little blue box. It wasn't something that I could take out and look at. It was a phone call. I received a phone call 
from my parents. They lived 600 miles away, and I'm telling you, I was glad to hear their voices on the phone. That's a, a gift that I'll cherish forever in my heart, because while we were on the phone, my mom sang happy birthday to me. <laughs> And their undivided attention was worth uh, more than gold to me. Another great present I received was from some of my coworkers. They asked if we could go to lunch. Now, this was huge because during the COVID timeout, that's what I call it, I hadn't been to a restaurant to sit down and have a meal for five months, for real. And so this was going to be huge if I said yes, but this is what got me. They didn't want to go to talk about work. They didn't want to make it a work lunch. They just wanted to spend some time together. The gifts we hold in our hands are great, but the gifts we hold in our hearts, mm, they're so special and we can cherish those forever. In our Bible story today, Mary gave Jesus the same love language that my parents gave me, and that my coworkers gave me. They gave the gift of quality time. According to Dr. Gary Chapman, there are five love languages, and maybe you've heard of them. The love languages are simply ways that we receive love, words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, physical touch, or receiving gifts. Now, when Dr. Chapman look at, looked at 10,000 respondents to a survey on his website about love languages, he found that the top love language for all those folks was words of affirmation. And tied at second place was quality time and acts of service. Those are the two things that Mary and Martha gave Jesus. But for this moment, I want us to focus on quality time as we looked at the gift of your presence. The gift of your presence, it simply means that you're there for someone. Not just your body being in the room, but you're really there. Your mind is there. You're paying attention. And in fact, you're giving your undivided attention. The other person feels like they're special, uh, like they're worth your time. When you talk, they listen, and, and they're not trying to figure out their comeback, you know? But they're actually listening to what you say. and then, you know, you feel heard. And even if there are no words being said, there's a connection. Pastor Bryant opened up his preaching series on the top 10 by challenging us to tithe our time, talent, and our treasure. So today, I just want to remind you that the Lord deserves our time. Here are three things to consider when spending quality time with others, including God. Number one, be present. Number two, be pleasant. And number three, prioritize. Number one, be present. Be present in the moment. I'm sure you've heard this before. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. To be present means to be focused, to be intentional. Have you ever had a whole conversation with someone and they didn't hear a word you said? <laughs> When you're present with someone, you're paying attention, you're giving them eye contact, you're giving them feedback, you know, some nods every now and then, some likes and some chat in the comment section, you know, uh, you're giving them some thoughtful comments. You might have to turn the TV off, power down uh, the cell phone or just leave it in the car to be fully there in the moment. When you're spending time with God, reading the Bible, praying or meditating, give your full attention and your focus on hearing what he wants to say to you. Number one is be present. Number two is be pleasant. Who wants to be with a grouch? <laughs> who wants to be around somebody who's always complaining? You know, I was walking outside the other day. I was trying to get some exercise in. I had my earphones in. And, and while the music was playing, I found my mind drifting into some negative thoughts just thinking about things that just had gone wrong or this or that. And I had to stop myself because on my walk, I was getting irritated and agitated with people who weren't even there. And I had to say to myself, I'm not going there today. And you might have to stop yourself so that you can actually uh, focus. The Bible says that a merry heart does good like medicine. We want to be around people that are pleasant, not people that are annoying. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as Christ and God forgave you. There's some things you're going to have to just let go so you can be pleasant while you're being present. 
Everything won't be peachy all the time, but you don't have to be mean. <laughs> so let's work at being positive and pleasant. Number one was be present. Number two was be pleasant. And number three, prioritize. You have to decide what or who is most important and move everything else aside to give them or that your focus. Make sure that your significant other actually feels significant, that the special people in your life really feel special. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when we're giving, let's give our best. Give them the best you. Give them the best version of yourself. You know, the you that was you when you were dating. Mm -hmm. The you that was you when you first got the job. <laughs> the new you when you just arrived in town. That, that, that's the you that people need to see. Appreciate the people around you. Don't take them for granted. Please and thank you go a long, long way. So, you know, when I think about the people in my life who I treasure, people who are in my top 10, they're people who are present, pleasant, and make me feel like I'm a priority. Who's in your top 10? Well, while you're thinking about that, I hope that God is at the top of your list. In fact, he's off the charts. God is present. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Psalm 46.1 tells us God is pleasant. He is our good shepherd. Psalm 23. God has made us his priority. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 The Lord's going to leave 99 others to make sure that he focuses on you. So God tops the chart of our top 10, but who's in the Lord's top 10? Hmm. Let me fast forward in this story about Mary. First, we met her at Martha's house, mesmerized by Jesus. She was so mesmerized that she couldn't or wouldn't help Martha with any of the housework and the cooking and the cleaning. She was being present with Jesus. She was being pleasant with him, and she was making Jesus her priority. When we see Martha and, and Mary again, they're again at a house. Mary is again at Jesus' feet, but this time she's pouring expensive fragrance on him. She's taking it to a whole other level. Her act of worship impresses Jesus so much that he makes a statement about her in Matthew 26, 13, and the same thing is said in Mark 14, 9. These are the words. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. And here we are discussing this woman, discussing Mary. It all started with her sitting at Jesus' feet, making him her priority by giving him the gift of her presence, her full self. And it ends with her being in Jesus' top 10. Can you imagine having one of the top 10 posts on IG? Can you imagine being one of the top 10 businesses? Not the Fortune 500, but the Fortune 10. Can you imagine being in the top 10% of your class? It all begins with giving God the gift of your presence. Let's be like Mary and be in Jesus's top 10. This week, practice giving the gift of your presence. Be present be pleasant, and prioritize. I hope this message was inspirational for you. And we're in the midst of a season right now where we're focused on the top 10 and preparing for our demonstration Sunday on September 13th. At New Birth, we're all going to sow our tithe at the same time. But before God receives our tithe, he says, leave it at the altar if you don't have things straight. So make sure you take time to be present with those that are around you. Make sure the air is clear and that it's clear with God as well. If you want to give your heart to the Lord and make sure that you're in his top 10, simply pray this prayer. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner, but today I want to give my whole life to you. I ask you to forgive me for my sin. I know that Jesus died on the cross for me and he rose to give me life. Please, Jesus, be my Savior and my Lord. I accept you now. If you pray that prayer, the Lord comes in your heart and makes your whole life brand new. If you want to join New Birth, join us on this movement.
you can simply go to the website, click join, and you can be a part of this great new birth movement that's going on. And if you want to sow, go ahead and just text NBGIVE to 77977 or any of the options that are on the screen. Uh, we just love being in partnership with you. Please tune in again every weekday at 1230 Eastern Time for another 15-minute inspirational message from New Birth. On behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, and the New Birth family, we thank you for listening today. We pray you are blessed, and we look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day of being amazed by God's grace.